Okay, this is going to be a rather long video today, so hello everyone, how's it going? Um, today we are going to be discussing communication in horses. So, this was brought to my attention um, when Star Stable used certain noises for the horses whenever they uh, you would rear or whatever, or stop, or just whatever, like horse noises. None of them are accurate. So, today, we're going to be talking about how horses communicate so we can better understand these animals. So, what are the main ways that horses communicate? There's audible communication and there's body language. So, audible communication is going to be squealing, whinnying, nickering, just any noise that they make. These are actually the main three. Body language is going to be everything from the position of their ears, their tail, their stance, are they kicking, are they giving like nasty looks at each other, just anything that does not involve noise. They... Horses are one of the most communicative animals in the world. You can always, a horse will always tell you what he is thinking. So we're going to see how we can um, see that. So first we're going to play a game. I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures and you're going to say, uh, tell me what you think the horse is saying or thinking or doing. So um, just I'm going to show you a picture and first thing you think of is what I want you to just um, just have in your mind. So, for example, I'll show you a picture like this. What do you think these two horses are thinking? Like, right away, what jumps out to you? And what do you think these horses are going to do? And what gives it away? All right, so do you guys have it? Good. So we have this horse and this horse. What do you think they're thinking? All right, going on to the next one. These two. And this one. These two again. Oh, I put that in twice. That was my bad. There we go. This one. And then this one. We all need to know what this one's thinking. These guys are probably going, oh no! <laughs> Ow, help! <laughs> and here. This is a dog, by the way. Alright. These two. And then these two. And these three. Can't really see this one, so we don't really know what he's thinking. And these two. Sorry for the logos, by the way. I tried my best. Okay. Before we see how you did, let's discuss. There are a few things that make up communication and why horses react that way. Eyesight. What can they see? Can they see what's going on or no? Is that going to trigger their fight or flight? And we will discuss that. Mood. Are they in a good mood or not? Temperament. Is the horse generally, like... An aggressive horse? Are they a, uh, a passive horse? Are they dominant? Are they uh, submissive? We'll talk about that too. And the environment and stimulation. What is going on around it that can influence what it is doing? Now let's go all the way back and let's discuss these. Okay. If you looked at these and you said, oh, oh my, these guys don't like each other and they're about to fight. Why did you say that? Ears. That's what we're going to talk about first. See these pinned ears? This is saying, oh, I am sizing you up, and I think I can take you. Look at his body language. He's off the ground in the front. His tail's out. He is in a very wide stance. He's saying, come on, come at me. I can take you. This one here is saying, okay, bet. See, he's up in the air. His tail is out. Wide stance again. His ears are a little more. He's not as intense as this one. He's judging the situation more. These two. If you said, oh, someone's about to get in trouble... That's it. This one, this is the dominant one in situation. Ears are pinned, eyes narrow, head over. See, protecting his head, that's what horses do. Coming into this horse's space. This one, eyes wide, ears up, trying to get away. So, you can see in this situation, this horse is saying, hey, I'm in charge, I'm trying to move you. And this horse is saying, okay, yes you are, and he's getting out of the way. How can we tell? Again, the facial features, uh, the ears, and the way that they are reacting. These two, if you looked at this and you said, oh no, that's bad, you are correct. So, what are these guys doing? Well, they're attacking each other. When horses go butt to butt, they mean business, because this is the business end of a horse. You know that. Everyone knows that. You never go behind a horse. Everyone told you that, because this is where all the power comes from. These guys, see, look at this. Both of them, ears are straight back, eyes are narrow, heads are up. They are almost ready to kick each other, feet off the ground. These guys do not like each other. And you can tell just by the body language alone. They, they, by the way, remember, 
the two main forms of communication, body language and audible, we have not heard any noises because these are all pictures, and we still get stuff like this. This one, what do we think this one is thinking? Ears are to the side, so we're rather content, tail's not really up, feet are flat, and he's just playing in the trough, he's saying, ha, I'm having a grand old time. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to mess in the water tank. This one's just having a good old time. We already went over that one. That's my bad. Okay, now this. Who looked at this and said, this guy's thinking, oh no. <laughs> this one, tail is up. Uh, he is moving forward. His face is up. This one was probably instigating. This one was getting up in this one's business, and this one said, hey, I don't want you where you are. Go away. Gave him warnings. This one still came over. But you see how the head is up? This is what horses do in the wild. If they know that these feet make contact with their head, it can kill them. But a horse's chest is super, super strong. So whenever um, stallions are approaching a mare or anything like that, and they know that the mare is going to kick, they will raise their head because their head is very, very fragile compared to their chest, and they'll let them kick their chest. Because horses have very, very, very strong chests, and they can get kicked in the chest, and it's not as big of a deal. Um, that's why whenever you have to tie a lead around a horse's neck or head, you always go for like the head or like the neck over here. Because if you tie anything down around here, that's where most of the horse's center of gravity is. So if you tie anything down here, the horse is not going to listen to you because it's way stronger than you. That's why whenever we control horses, it's up in this area or up here. This one is saying, hey, you are in my face and I'm not giving you a warning anymore. I'm just straight up attacking you. I'm telling you, hey, back off. I don't want you here. These ones. Okay. You saw this one and said, oh, <laughs> this is bad. Yeah, this one's straight up saying, hey, get out of my space. I don't want you here. See, we and it's actually attacking. Ears back. That's a mad horse. This one, on the other hand, look at the eyes. Now, when horses have eyes like this, this is more of a relaxed, happy kind of thing. Those ears aren't completely back. This is a horse saying, I'm just going to mess with you. This one's not really being too aggressive. How can you tell the difference? Well, look at this ear, and then look at that ear. I know the head is in two different positions, so it's really hard to tell, but this one is not pinned as much as this one is. This one is straight back. This one's saying, I do not like you. This one's saying, hey, I'm in a mood. I'm just going to bite you. And look at the eyes as well. This eye and this eye are two different shapes. This one, he's saying, nope, I gave you a warning and you didn't listen, so I'm attacking you now. This one's saying, huh, I'm just going to see if I can get away with this. This one, <laughs> if you said, oh no, that poor dog, again, you are right. Why do you think you're right on this one? If you said, oh, I know I'm right because look at those ears, that is horrifying. Look, he is running full speed and look at that tail is up. You're completely right. That's a bad situation, and that dog knows it. He's getting out of there. Now, these ones. What did you think of these two? Did you think that this one was being aggressive? Because if you did, that's not true. This one is just running and playing, and this one's like, hey, this is my friend. I'm going to show him who's boss. This is just a playful thing, and you can tell by the ear. See the tail's down. Nothing really too aggressive about his stance. See, he has that, uh, that slope in his eye. That's a happy, relaxed kind of thing. Ears are to the side. That's curious. Ears are perked forward. He's focusing on whatever's in front of him. We can't see. These two are not being aggressive towards one another. This is just a friendly thing. Now these two, if you're saying, oh, they're in love or whatever, not really. Um, this is a super relaxed thing. These are just two herd members trying to strengthen their bond. They're sniffing each other. They're getting to know each other. They're saying, hey, who are you? This one's super curious. Like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sniff you. I'm going to see who you are. This is just... When herds get to know each other, this is what they do. Whenever her horses introduce each other, for, uh, introduce themselves to each other for the first time, they go nose to nose, they go nose to their flank, and then nose to nose again. They're getting to know each other's scent. Now, let's go with these two. How did you know that this horse here was just playing? Well, tail's kind of swishing, but his ears are up, he's focused on the water, he's not really focused on surroundings too much, he's just, he's just playing, that's just a playful thing little skinny though, but just playing. This one here, how can you tell that this one's relaxed? Easiest way to tell is because he's lying down. Horses are prey animals. They are a fight or flight animal. Lying down is one of the quickest ways to die. Because if you're on the ground, you have to get up before you can even run. So you're wasting time getting yourself off the ground to be able to run 
Horses don't like that. That's why when you see horses resting standing up, horses do not sleep standing up, by the way. They rest standing up. The reason why you see horses resting standing up is so they can get a little bit of rest without actually, good lord, excuse me, without actually sleeping again. The reason they do this, the longer they're down, the more uh, in danger they are. Predators like cougars, um, when they see a horse that is down, they can jump onto the back of the horse and they aim for the back of the neck. Horses do not want any animal getting to the neck because they have a jugular vein, These two, the, the main veins here, that will kill them. So as long as they're not on the ground, their neck is farther away from the predator and they can get away. So the fact that this horse is lying down, or he's actually getting up from rolling, because see this, this leg's over here, whatever he's doing, he is down. He's just playing. He's just having a good time. He knows he's not in any danger. They're just relaxed. They're having a grand time. Now these ones. Same can be said here. Ears are sideways, but the reason is, see, they're not back, though. These ears are not pinned. They're just off to the side. See, he's rearing. He's just playing. He's having a good time. He's also really young, and how can you tell? Well, he he doesn't have as much weight on him. He has a very young face. He doesn't have that mature look to them. Like, these ones have a more mature look. This is a little juvenile, and his mane's a lot shorter, too. This one, same thing. He's really concerned. He's like, wait a minute, excuse me, what are you doing? He's listening to what's behind him. There might have been a noise back there. He's looking out for his friends while he's still doing his thing. Um, let's continue on. Now, after what you learned and what I showed you, what do you think these horses are saying? Let us start... I'm going to talk a bit about this one. Let's start with this one. Dressage horse. It's cut off, which I'm sorry about that, but the ears are back in this picture. Tail is swishing. He is not having a good time. He's not doing this because he wants to, he's doing this because he's forced to. And we'll get into the neck arch at another video. This is also really bad. So this, no. Well, look at this one. He's focusing on whatever is over here. He's trying to go this way, but he's being pulled this way. This is his chest here. He's trying to go this way, and he can't. And there's this bit in his mouth forcing him back. This is a drop noseband bridle. This is a horrible situation. This horse is trying to get away, but the rider is not listening, and he's telling him no. What's happening here? His bull is charging this horse, and this horse's head's in the air, and he's trying to back up, and he's saying, hey, excuse me, why am I here right now? I do not like this. The rider's also pulling his head back, so this horse has shanks. He is pulling the horse's head back while this horse's head is in the air. He is not on balance. If he continues to back up, he can flip, because with the way he's going here, his balance is like this. What do you think happens if he trips? Well, he and the rider are going down. This is not a good situation, and this is horrible. And this one. Legs are apart, tails up, ears are to the side. He's concerned. He's scared. Look at him sidestepping. What do you think's going on? Well, he is against a wall. There are people staring at him. There's someone behind him with a long stick, and they are trying to move him, and he doesn't know what's going on. He is looking for an escape, and he does not have one. This is horrible, and I don't know why people do stuff like this, and I don't know why people don't understand that the horse is not ready for this. This horse is just trying to escape, and he cannot. There are so many people, which, by the way, the more people you have around an arena, the more stressed the horse is going to be. Humans are predatory animals, naturally, and horses are prey. They see us as threats. So he is trying to escape, and he cannot. So what happens if you take away a horse's flight? Well, that's when horses get dangerous in situations like this. And I wouldn't be surprised if this lady who thinks she knows what she's doing got kicked. So, let's talk about fight or flight for a minute. What is it? Fight or flight is the one of the two responses that animals will give in a certain situation. The flight response means they will run. The fight response means they will turn and they will try to combat whatever it is that is uh, triggering that response. Prey animals, such as horses, and really most animals, if they have the opportunity, they will flight. They will run. They don't want to get hurt. Most animals in nature don't want to get hurt because if they get hurt, then they can't hunt, then they can't run away from predators. They can't do that stuff. So most animals will always try to avoid fighting if possible. That is why um, in media, I think it's stupid in media when animals like wolves or anything like that are portrayed as like these blood and sharks are like these bloodthirsty killers that'll come after humans for no reason. No, they will never come after a human for no reason unless they are provoked. So same with horses. Horses 
in nature will try and run because they don't want to know interact with humans humans are humans are bad humans are really bad for natural horses they catch them and then they do stuff like this to them so they will try and run what happens if you take the flight away from an animal that is scared it will fight you what does that involve when it comes to you know predatory animals well with your like let's take a dog for example if your dog is running from you and you corner it what's it going to do it's going to bite you it's going to claw you it's going to do all this stuff it's trying to get away it's not attacking you because it feels like attacking you it's attacking you because it doesn't want to be around you same with horses if you corner this horse right here and he has no way to escape and he wants to get out of there what is the easiest way the path of least resistance it's through this lady he's going to kick her and then he's going to run so we need to understand that there is a fight or flight response in every single animal and we need to respect it. That doesn't mean that we need to cave to the animal. It means we just need to know how to train the animal and do it in a way where we are not scaring it into performing these responses. Because that's how animals die. Because they're labeled dangerous because we took away their ability to get away. Now, let's talk about a horse's range of vision. Kind of related, kind of not. A horse's range of vision, um, this is where can they see? So what is a safe area to be in where the horses will be able to see us, where we won't scare them just being in their blind side? Horses blind side, there's a triangle here in front of their face where they cannot see. That is the worst representation. That's right there. This all this whole area, blind. Cannot see. So when you're up in your horse's face, he can't see what's going on. So if you've ever had a horse like pull back when you're trying to hug him, that's why. And the horse's blind spot is like a triangle back. So none of this area, horse cannot see. So what happens if you're in that area? Well, if you spook the horse, he'll kick you. If you're in anywhere over here or over here, you can be seen. Anywhere out here, you can be seen. But in this red area, horse cannot see you. That is why if you, walk, if you run or jump behind a horse, they will kick you because they think you're a predator. So... This is why you are told to never go behind a horse. Because you can get kicked because you are scaring the horse because it can't see you. It's why it's also dangerous to restrict a horse's head. Because when they turn their head, if this horse just turns his head slightly, let's say, here, let's go back to the pen real quick. Let's say the horse changes his head so he's looking this way. Just that slight turn and his blind spot is now over here. See how much that changes it? So when we restrict our horse's heads, and we make them only able to look this way, we are creating a dangerous zone over here for anyone who ends up behind the horse. So, when we are working with horses, we don't want to use cross ties or anything like that. We want to we wanna have a, like a, the simplest way of tying them up where they are restricted and not able to leave, but they are still able to look around, so it is less likely that someone will end up in an area like this and they will get kicked. So, tails and ears. What do they mean? Perky forward, but relaxed. He's interested, whatever's going on in front of him. What if the ears are turned back? Like the little awkward ears, where were they? Where were the awkward ears? Which one was it? This one. Awkward ears. You know how they're kind of like to the sides? Okay. It was very far away, not to go all the way back. Okay, the awkward ears. Relax, listening to whatever's around him, just focused on the area. Stiffly forward. Hey, there's something in front of me. I'm worried. I don't know what it is, but I'm focused. Ears are pointed to the right, relaxing, paying absolutely no attention. Here are more awkward ears. Pointed left and right, saying, hey, you know, something over here. I'm focusing on this one. Something over here. I'm focusing on this one. I'll show you that one, too. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was one in here. Yeah, this one. I think there's something over here. See this one? His ear is focused on it too. There's something over in this direction. We're kind of interested. I'm still going to bite you though. <laughs> something over there. Um, that one. I'm focused on you, but something caught my attention over here too. Those are the awkward ears. Okay. Stiffly back. I'm annoyed. I'm worried. But there's something behind me. I don't know what it is. I want to know what it is. So I'm paying attention. Droopy ears, calm, resting. I'm about to take a nap. I don't think there were any in the slideshow that had that, but if there were, 
you know, this is this is a sleepy pony. Ears are flattened. This is the watch out because you didn't listen to my warnings, so now I'm going to show you who's boss. Now, we had that. That is this. This is, hey, I gave you a warning to get out of here. You didn't get out of here. Now you're going to suffer the consequences. <laughs> Tails. Now, this is going to be rather confusing, because I don't really have a lot in the slideshow that showed this. Tails just relax. This is, hey, you know, whatever. If it's slightly out, I was startled. I'm concerned. I'm going to do something. You know, I don't know what, but it's going to happen. The tail is straight out. That's hey. I'm going to strike forward with my feet. Out far, uh, a little farther than that. I'm about to bite. Excited. It's up. Running. It's going to look like that. When the horse's tail is tucked down between its legs, the horse is scared. Kind of like a dog. They do the same thing. So if you've ever, um, if you've ever put your hand like right here on your horse's butt, and your horse tucks his tail in, he's saying, "Hey, I don't know what you're doing back there, but I don't like it." Um, then sometimes they'll hunch their butt because there's going to be um, wind and rain. They do that to protect themselves. And also, if they're of a low social status, it's say, "Hey, there's another horse in there." It's kind of like wolves too. Like, "Hey, there's something higher than me. I'm trying to make myself look as small as possible." Swishing. There's bugs on me, or I'm mad, and I can show you a few of them actually. See, this is hey. This is not, I'm annoyed at you. This is, there's a bug on my side. I'm going to get that. See, this is up. This is, this is a mix of, I'm running, and I'm about to bite you. See, this one is all the way up. This is, I'm striking with my feet. See how this is out? This is the, the startled, like, I'm going to do something, but I don't know what yet. This is the, I'm going to strike you. And see how these are tucked in? The reason these are tucked in is because their butts are coming off the ground and they're kicking backward. If these, so the tail is a continuation of the spine. So if a horse is going to kick and they have their tail up in the air in the I'm going to kick uh, thing, that could break their spine because if that gets kicked the wrong way, that's terrible. So when horses are in the action of donkey kicking, that's what it's called when they kick with both feet, they tuck that tail in so their spine doesn't get damaged. Okay. Oh, it was a long slideshow. Um, now we are going to look at what noises horses make. So first we're going to do a whinny. A whinny is the sound a horse makes. A horse, When a horse whinnies, he is saying, where are you? Horses only whinny when they are looking for another horse. And a horse's whinny is so powerful that it can be heard by another horse from five miles away. A whinny says, hey. Is there anyone in this area? Because if so, I want you. Because horses, again, they are social animals. They want a herd. How do you get a herd? You try and attract them to your area. And to do that, you've got to make noise so they know you're there. And that is why horses, when you watch movies and horses are just neighing all the time, they're not actually doing that. Because when horses are making noise and they don't need to, that attracts predators. They don't want to do that. Whinnies are only made if they are looking for someone or another horse. Squeal. This is the sound horses make when they are attacking each other or they're saying, hey, get away from me. This is a combattle noise. The horse is fighting. This is the noise they're going to make. This is saying, hey, I don't like you. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to hurt you. I don't like you or what you're doing. And the knicker. A knicker is a noise that is sometimes associated with breathing, uh, breeding and stuff like that. It's a, a knicker means come here. They are looking at a specific horse and they're saying, hey, I want your attention. I want you to come over to me. That is what a knicker is. And they, they're they done specifically like within herds, for different herd members and stuff like that. Let's watch that again, see uh, the horse comes over, he whinnies, he's saying, hey, someone out there, right there, see his ears, his ears are listening, see, he perks, oh, there's a response, and then he runs over and tries to get that horse's attention.
Okay, again. Uh, here we go. So I'm telling you no staying in or paint whatever, saying, hey, stop touching me. They're the ones still instigating. He's squealing. He's warning him. He's saying, stop that. I don't know why the woman's laughing, though. That's kind of rude. Squealing. Hey, no, stop. so cute, you know that? See this horse? He, uh, he perks up, there's his owner, he says, Oh, hey, look at you, hey, can you come over here? He's trying to interact with the owner. There's the anchor, that's a noise of, hey, come here, it's a very fun noise. Yeah, he's cute. So, horses' noises and their verbal communication, it's not as much as you would think it is. Um, so we're going to look at the noises now that we've watched these videos and listened to these noises. We're going to look at Star Stable's, um, noises, and we're going to see if they match up, because they're, they, I do not agree with them, and we're going to see why. That's what this slide was, and I read it ahead of time. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, noises in Star Stable. Here we go. I don't know if I'll be able to get the noises to do it, but let's try. So, that was a whinny right there. Why would a horse be whinnying if it's rearing? It... Okay. So, one. Let's try and get different noise. There we go. Sneezing. That was a sneeze. Why would a horse sneeze when it's doing that? I don't know. Same noise. I think that might be there just for people to roleplay, you know. Those are the only two noises they make when they... Okay, whatever. So, I know they make more noises when they hard stop. We'll do that in a second. The noise they do when you buy stable care. Give this a listen. <coughs> okay. This is the whole reason I made this entire presentation, by the way. Like, this half-hour presentation. All because of that noise. You know what that noise is? That is a noise that a horse makes when it gets hurt. Um, that is a really awful noise. Um, first time I heard it, I jumped. I was like, whoa. Ew. What was that? I hated that. That noise is not a good one. Um, that was a horse losing its breath. I don't know. Some of the noises that they make in this game, my lord. None of them fit the situation. I don't understand it. Uh, let's try a hard stop. See, there was a soft knicker right there. We'll do it again. That Winnie, that's an awful Winnie too. I mean, these are all like default horse noises you can get online for free. But nose clearing, yeah. So none of these noises make sense for the situation that they are in. That was a knicker too. Why are you knickering as you are doing a sliding stop? That is, horses don't do that. The only time horses call for each other, let's say I was taking my horse for a trail ride, which I wouldn't be galloping, I'd be walking, um, all the way over here, my horse stops and realizes, oh wait, I'm alone. That, oh, of course you make the wrong noise. And I reared four times. And I, there we go. That's when my horse would whinny. He'd be like, wait a minute, I'm alone. What do I do? I don't have any friends out here. That's when your horse whinnies. Your horse would nicker if your horse is back over here. Your horse is next to this horse. You, so your horse sees this horse and he's like, oh, okay, will you nicker now? No, well, of course you won't. <laughs> Struggling. Oh, now you won't make the noise. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is when your horse would nicker. Is when you're like, oh. There we go, there's the nicker. When you're like, oh, you're right there. I want you to come closer. I want to sniff you. I want to get to know you. That's when your horse would nicker. Your horse would squeal if, hey, I am getting to know you. Wait a minute, you're too close. I don't want, I want you to back off, you're not backing off, then your horse would squeal. That's not a squeal, there isn't a squeal in this game, that'd be horrifying. That's when they would make that noise. So, and the noise that you make when you buy stable care is one of the most awful noises that I have ever heard. And, um, that is not a noise you ever want to hear come out of your horse. So, um, yeah, back to the video. <laughs> We talked a lot about horses fighting, and I showed you all the Star Stable stuff, so... You know what? Let's end this off with a loving relationship. Horses are very communicative animals, like we said. They tell you exactly what they are thinking, and we just need to understand how to listen. 
by simply observing the social orders of horses and how they communicate between each other will help you learn how to communicate with your horse when you are riding in the ring or in a trail and it will help you how to train your horse because you can listen to him and understand what the heck he is trying to say. In herds, um, we're ending it off with a loving note, uh, there are two individuals that will develop a special relationship. This doesn't need to be like a male-female breeding relationship, it's just friends. Um, horses have dominant and submissive um, behaviors, so what will happen is if a dominant horse and a submissive horse become friends, they don't have to be the leaders of the herd, but they have a good bond in the relationship, uh, a good bond in the herd, they develop a nice relationship, they will do something called allo grooming. Now what allo grooming is, is this right here. You may have seen horses do it before. It is when two individuals will scratch each other's withers with their teeth, and it's this really rigorous, um, really, really hard, like digging into each other's withers. It feels really, really good. It's like a back scratch. It's you scratch your back, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll scratch your back, you'll scratch mine type thing. You know, only the most close horses will do this with each other. It's not the most common thing, but when you see it, it's like, aw, that's endearing. So, um, when horses do this, it's between a submissive horse and a dominant horse. Can you tell which is which? I'm pretty sure this one's the dominant one. So, the dominant one will be the one that engages, and the submissive one will be the one that follows. Now, what happens when they're done? The aggressive one will bite the submissive one and say, all right, we're done now. But does that mean that he's being aggressive? No. That means he's saying, okay, grooming time's over. So to bond with your horse more, take a, take like a curry comb or something and just start rubbing on their withers and stuff like that. Or whenever you're riding, they do something good. Give them some nice, really, really rigorous scratches on their withers. They love it and they'll appreciate you more. They'll say, oh, you're my buddy. You know, you are the dominant one. You're saying, okay, it's time for scratchies. Now, if a horse tries to do this to you, though, you got to bop him and tell him no. When you discipline a horse, that doesn't, in the horse's mind, that doesn't mean, oh, no, you don't love me. You just disciplined me. Oh, no. That means, oh, you are the dominant one, and you are showing me that you are in charge. I have to listen to you. So disciplining your horse is not a bad thing. What is a bad thing is when you start hitting him in the face and screaming and all that stuff. That's bad. But a smack on the chest to a horse, that's saying, oh, I shouldn't do that. That is how you teach horses, and that's how you form a good relationship with your horse. You need to be assertive, but you need to also show your horse that you love him, too. Giving him pats is not a good... You want to scratch him, and you want to get all in his uh, on his neck and on his um, withers and in his chest. You want to tell him he's a good boy. If it's a boy, you want to rub up under their stomach because that reminds them of what they would do with their mothers, you know. Horses love that. So little tips and tricks on how to uh, bond with your horse a little more. Uh, free of charge. <laughs> All right. Here are some amazing sources. Um, I didn't use a lot here because I, I know most of this information already. And um, Julie Goodnight does an amazing cameo. Um, what does she do? She does a bunch of tours. She's a great horseman. I love her. Um, I get a lot of my information from her. She taught me a lot. I love this woman. A uh, great trainer. And this guy, his name is Rick. He is great. He is a horseman and shows you videos and tells you what's going on in the eyes of the horses. Love his channel as well. He's great. But um, I would only recommend him to more mature audiences because his stuff might offend certain people. I mean, it doesn't offend me. I love it. Um, so these are two amazing people to give you more information. And they will really help you out. I highly recommend both of them, and I cannot speak high, higher of Julie or Rick. So, that was a very, very long video. Um, I don't usually ask this, because I use... Um, most of my videos are done in one take, because I'm really, really lazy. But this one has been done in about three, uh, four, five. So, you know... I usually don't ask for you guys to like and subscribe, but uh, don't even like the video. Just comment any questions that you have. Um, tell me what you want me to do in the future. Remember, this is all going to be Star Stable related. I'm not going to do anything that's not in the game, you know. So, uh, comment any questions, you know. Um, subscribe, and I'd say turn the bell notification on. And the only reason I'm saying this is because I don't post often. And, you know, I'd like for you guys to know when I do, because my schedule is anything but cohesive. So thank you guys for giving me your time.
Buddy and Mr. T, you're good boys. Have a nice day.